The two towers are now a reality, and all eyes are on the next chapter, the awaited return of the king. SpaceX's second launch tower at Starbase has been fully installed, an achievement accomplished in a remarkably short time, once again capturing the world's attention. This significant moment strengthens the foundation for SpaceX's future ambitions, boosting their confidence as they prepare for their next mission. The first attempt to catch the Starship booster with Mechazilla's arms. Although many challenges lie ahead, SpaceX has meticulously prepared for every possibility. Ready to embark on this thrilling journey? Let's dive deeper into today's episode with us at NR Studio. The second launch tower at Starbase is one of the most anticipated structures of the year. On August 21st, just after 7 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the T-Rex crane was connected to Module 9, the final piece of the tower. Within an hour, the module was lifted and welded into place, officially completing the basic structure of the tower. Now the tower stands tall alongside the first, offering an impressive sight on the horizon. To mark this achievement, SpaceX tweeted, the second launch tower has been installed as the latest addition to Starbase, with Elon Musk adding his own comment, the two towers. This statement references Musk's previous comments, suggesting that the next stage of the Starship program truly deserves the title, the two towers. Although this project is slightly behind the FAA's target completion date of August 15th, it is important to highlight that SpaceX managed to install all the parts in just one month, an incredible improvement compared to the nine months it took for the first tower. This delay is unlikely to impact the overall schedule. Now, SpaceX is moving into phase three of the plan, which will continue until January 28th next year. This phase will focus on developing additional systems, including the Mechazilla arms, the orbital launch mount with a water-cooled steel system or flame trench, the tank farm system, and fuel rails. These advancements are crucial as SpaceX aims to increase their launch frequency with an initial target of 25 flights per year. As Starbase evolves, this new launch tower will play a key role in SpaceX's plans to catch the Starship stage in the future. It marks a significant step toward achieving full reusability of their giant rocket, a goal that no other organization has yet accomplished. This ambitious target could be realized as early as Flight 6 or Flight 7. Although many steps still need to be taken, the completion of the second tower has laid an important foundation for SpaceX's future endeavors. Ready to enter this new phase? If so, respond with the number one in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's journey. Soon, we will witness a pivotal event in space exploration as SpaceX attempts to catch the super heavy booster using Mechazilla's arms for the first time in Flight 5. SpaceX is currently finalizing preparations for this flight, with the wet dress rehearsal test still pending, while they await the necessary approval from the FAA. With current progress, the launch could happen around mid-September. What are your predictions? Share them in the comments below. What can we expect from this flight? While many procedures will follow previous missions, this flight introduces two important elements. First, the spacecraft may conduct an in-space engine ignition test, a task that was skipped in the previous two flights. Testing the engine in space is crucial as SpaceX prepares for longer missions in the future. However, the biggest challenge is the attempt to catch the super heavy booster with Mechazilla's arms. Elon Musk recently shared a video highlighting this process, emphasizing SpaceX's commitment to this revolutionary endeavor. Unlike previous flights where the booster soft landed in the Gulf of Mexico, this time it will return to the launch site, a maneuver involving much more complex procedures. The grid fins must be highly active in guiding the booster's descent, and although this system has performed well in the past, this trial will be far more challenging. The engines, especially the gimbal engines, will play a critical role in steering the booster and managing its deceleration, with the entire descent expected to take about 10 minutes from an altitude of over 60 kilometers. As the booster approaches the launch tower, the process becomes increasingly complicated. The grid fins and engines must work in harmony to guide the booster into position with precise speed control and alignment. The chopstick arms will then open and the booster must move into position precisely. Once aligned, the arms will slowly close around the booster, securing it safely. After catching the booster, the chopstick arms will adjust their position 
and rotate it to place it back on the orbital launch mount next to the tower. While this process is designed to run smoothly, there are no guarantees. This trial carries significant risks. The navigation process itself could be problematic, as this will be the first time the engines and grid fins perform such a complex task. Previous flights have shown that engine failure at critical moments can cause the booster to deviate from its planned path. Once the flight phase is over, the approach and landing become more challenging. If issues arise, SpaceX might choose to land the booster at sea. However, as it nears star base, alternative options diminish, and any misalignment with the chopstick arms could result in a collision with the tower or other infrastructure, potentially leading to a catastrophic explosion. External factors such as wind and fog can also interfere with various stages of the process. Despite these challenges, SpaceX has reasons to be confident. Their experience with landing super heavy boosters during previous flights, especially the successful landing during Flight 4, demonstrates strong navigation and deceleration capabilities, skills that will be invaluable in the upcoming attempt. Additionally, the chopstick system has undergone numerous improvements, with recent tests ensuring that the ground systems are ready to catch the returning booster. A decade ago, the idea of a rocket landing vertically or on a drone ship in the middle of the ocean seemed impossible. Yet SpaceX achieved it and has since made it routine. While skepticism and concern about this unprecedented challenge are natural, it's crucial to support SpaceX as they continue to push the boundaries of space exploration. One successful mission will lead to the next ambitious target, catching both the booster and the spacecraft. That's when the second tower will truly come into play. This new system, along with the first tower, will work together to recover the entire starship, marking the first time a rocket has been fully landed and recovered. This achievement will signal a new era for the Starship project. Over time, more towers and flights will join, heralding the return of the king, the future leader of the aerospace industry, Starship. That's all for today's episode. Thank you for watching. Until next time, keep looking up.